Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank all of you for being here today. As the only pharmacist currently serving in Congress, I'm very familiar with the 340B program. I've seen the benefits. I've also seen where it can be abused. As the chairman said earlier, the chairman of the full committee, the reason we are here is because one of the initiatives of this committee, hence oversight and investigations, is to look into programs and see how we can improve those programs. I will remind you that we had a hearing in July, and for my colleagues, I want to remind them, if you can play the clip now, of what we heard in that hearing. Well, looks like we're not going to get it. But what we heard over and over was the statute is silent. The statute is silent. It was an irresponsibility of members of Congress that we did not specify exactly what we heard. You got it now? The 340B statute is uh, silent. So the statute is silent. Correct. The statute is silent. So the statute is silent. So the, the statute is silent. The statute is silent because the statute is, is silent. silent. The statute is, is silent. The statute is silent. The statute is silent. The statute is silent. That's what we heard. That's why we're here today. That's why we need your help because it's irresponsible of us. That's our responsibility in Congress. You know, I take offense and I am resentful of my colleagues on the other side of the dais to insinuate that we have somehow said we wanted to cut out this program. I have never heard anyone say we wanted to cut out this program, but we have a responsibility as members of Congress to make sure this program's running correctly and that it's not being abused. I wanna ask some very quick questions here. Ms. Uh, Banna, I, I'm very familiar with Northside Hospital, and I've worked with in, in the state legislature. You enjoy a great reputation in the state of Georgia. I'm sure it's hard-earned. I'm sure it's well-deserved. However, I need to ask you some questions, particularly as it relates to consolidation. One of the things that I've discovered as a member of Congress is just what an impact our, our actions here in Congress can have on the private sector and have on the free market. Have you, in recent years since you've started this program, has there been an increase in the number of clinics that Northside Hospital has acquired, specifically oncology clinics? Um, I think that we, as a, as a hospital system, are being encouraged to expand our clinically integrated outpatient care model, yes. Uh, that's not what I ask, and you're under oath, okay, Ms. Banna? Have you increased the number of oncology clinics that you have bought since the 340B program has come in, into effect? Well, in our case, we did acquire oncology clinics in 2011 and 12, yes. Does the 340B program have anything to do with that? Are you, in, are you acquiring the oncology clinics because you have a, a chance to make more money through the 340B program? Hence, what we've done in Congress is leading to a consolidation in health care inadvertently on our part? No, and forgive me, that goes back to my prior answer. We are being encouraged to expand our clinically integrated model past the hospital. Ms. Banna, can you get me in writing how many oncology clinics Northside Hospital has, has acquired since 1992? Will you do that for me? I'd appreciate that very much. I want to go now to Mr. Rulin and, and John Hopkins, and I want to ask you, in, how many 340B drugs were distributed to Part B beneficiaries last year? Do you know that? I don't know that. Can you get me that in writing? Uh, I, I think so. So what's the question? The question is, how many 340B drugs were distributed to Part B recipients last year through John Hopkins? It, it might be good to work offline to make sure we know what you mean by how many drugs. I will make how many drugs. drugs. I mean, obviously, 340B drugs that you got through that. But there, I, when we... Uh, we'd be happy to work with you. Okay, you, you are familiar with CMS and their recent uh, proposal to cut the reimbursement for Part B reimbursement on these drugs from APS to plus six to APS minus 22 and a half. All of you are familiar with that proposal? Mr. Gifford, you said earlier in your testimony, in your opening testimony, that um, that it doesn't cost the government any, pro, any money whatsoever, and I would refute that point. In fact, I would tell you that the CMS has said that by 
by changing this formula that it could save over $900 million. So it does cost taxpayers money, and it costs taxpayers money not only in the Part B program, but also in the programs with Part D, when it pushes people out of the donut hole into the catastrophic. Then the federal government has to pay more, and that's something that costs us as well. One question for you, Mr. Gifford, and that is, I, as I understand it, the requirements for the Ryan White patients, for the AIDS patients, are actually more stringent than they are for in, in anywhere else. You seem to be a strong advocate of the program and, and very supportive of the program. If we were to tighten it up for the other areas, do you think that it would impact them that much? I would hope that the committee would look at expanding um, the use of the dollars that we save through 340B, and I included that in the written testimony. The current uh, constriction on Ryan White programs are actually uh, inhibiting our ability to. So instead of uh, so, so mm -hmm. your answer to me is that this is actually restricting you. You could actually, if we were to loosen it up instead of tightening it up, that you could actually do more as these other hospitals have done. If we could loosen this up for Ryan White. But my question to you was, since you've got more stringent requirements, you, you still benefited from the program. You spoke very highly of the program. The program does uh, support the fight against AIDS in many ways, and we would hope that the committee would expand our ability to offer life-saving Again, let me explain to all of you that no one has said they want to do away with this program. All we've said is that we understand we have a responsibility to tighten this up to make sure it's being used like it was. And Ms. Veer, you've made some very good points, and I want to thank you for what you're doing over there. Gentlemen, thank you very you. much, Mr. Chairman.